KTN News, get the whole story. What is in a number? It could be an age, it could be years or something, it could be money, anything. But in this context on patient's diary, four is the age of blessing. Seven is the number of surgeries that she's had to go through in her four years of life. Though too young to understand the magnitude of this, her mother Lillian has been there throughout, right from the diagnosis of Hertzsprung's disease, which I'll tell you about, to stoma care, which the experts will explain how stomas like colostomies come about, their challenges, and the do's and don'ts. On Doctor's Diary, your everyday hero is Dr. Lugogo Athman in Makueni County. Lugogo was stigmatized as a child because of a deformity that he had on his nose. Years spent in hospital probably inspired him to be a doctor. He studied medicine in Russia where he did all manner of odd jobs. And believe it or not, Dr. Athman can plait and braid any lady's hair. The stethoscope is just a recent addition to his life. This is Health Digest. I'm Dr. Masi Korir, and we begin from Nairobi on Patient's Diary with Lillian. Jane Lillian Gatuhu is now a mother of one, her blessing. Exactly four years ago, though, at a time like this, things were not looking up. She had just delivered blessing via an emergency caesarean section. Her little bundle of joy, however, was unable to suckle and breastfeed. She was given a formula milk. Then by evening, I noted she was vomiting yellow. And then her, her tummy was a bit bloated. So I, and then on trying to breastfeed her, she wouldn't. So I called the nurses, but they thought it's the kawaida. You know, the ladies of nowadays are attacking Kunyanesha. So they thought I also wanted to be like them. I waited for like two days before they would take it for an emergency, as an emergency. So the tummy became so bloated and she didn't go for the first stool, the meconium, even at day two. So they called one of the doctors and on checking, he noted that my baby had a, an issue and she was taken to the nursery. This was not easy for the new mother. Barely a few days old and her baby was on tubes, drips and a battery of examinations and tests to figure out what was wrong with her. But on the fifth day, that is when she went her first stool, which was very smelly. But bad, From the many tests done, including a biopsy that had been taken, an answer was eventually found. He noted the intestines had, part of the intestines didn't have nerves. This is called Hertzsprung's disease, named after a Danish physician. It is a developmental disorder where a child is born without certain nerves in the colon which cause the muscles to contract and therefore move food along the system. It can occur in one out of every 1,500 to 7,000 live births. It is more common in boys than girls. Hertzsprung's disease can manifest within the first two months of life. A child will delay in passing the first tool may have distended abdomen, vomiting, poor feeding, constipation, or a failure to thrive. An x-ray when done will show distended bowel loops. The main treatment for this is surgery, and they may be several. Nursery, the newborn unit, it was so scary, because every time you went, you met the child who was next to your child was normal. So, 
you enter the nursery with fear. The first step you, you did before entering, you had to peep through the window and check if the, your baby is in the court. Blessing was taken in for surgery at 10 weeks. Five days later, she was on her way home for the very first time after all went according to plan. After one of the routine examinations in a follow-up clinic, Lillian noticed something unusual with her baby. After my daughter came, in the diaper there were two parts, the front one and the back one. So for me I thought it was normal. Until one day I stayed with my daughter, then I saw the stool coming out from the front part. So I called the surgeon and he booked me up to his clinic. When he detected there was fistula, he told me the only solution to solve the fistula was the colostomy. So that we would, he would try first rectify the, the fistula, then my baby would undergo another surgery for the closure of the colostomy so that she would go back to normal. First, this meant another major surgery for blessing to patch the fistula. Many days of hospital visits and follow-ups before the colostomy would be closed, something that took a year. Normally after surgery, the following morning, she used to wake up and start playing. I always used to be discharged on the second or third day after the surgery, but this one, it was the worst. On arriving home, I noted that on, on that bandage, there was a discharge. The curiosity in me, because now I had become this hard woman who can do anything, I removed the bandage. On checking, I saw that there was pus oozing from the that wound. So I called the doctor. I went, he prescribed some antibiotics. I thank God that she healed, but you see, the fistula was still there. So we had another series of surgeries awaiting. I don't know how many. Lillian was dealing with what seemed like a never-ending headache. She took her daughter to another surgery, which she thought would close the fistula once and for all. The doctor came out, and then the nurses were realized, ah, so many kwazile's are caught. I have never waited for this long. I always wait. If it's three hours, it's three hours. Now it's four hours. Daktari ametoka, mdot hajakuja. I thought my daughter has passed on, and they don't know how to begin. So many kwazile's are caught. Yani, after all the other surgeries, in your two me on a two mchukwe. The one I the one I think it's the final one and in one of the best hospitals. So Mukwazileza, I wish I had gone to Kenyatta. This would have not happened. On waiting for my baby to come with the fistula done with and no colostomy, my daughter came back with another colostomy. You know the doctor first called me aside and told me, Mama please. I have to talk to you. To my jaribu to Kaona, if we, if we don't put the colostomy, we'll be in and out of data. So we have to put a colostomy, then do a pull through, so that we, we cut the bad intestines again. We do a pull through, then we can later deal with the colostomy. Taking care of a baby with a colostomy was no walk in the park. If it gets in infected, you have to go to the hospital and be under very strong antibiotics. So you have to be very clean and very careful with them because you don't wipe them with like rough things. Yeah, stomach care is not easy. Stoma World Kenya was her to go to place for free colostomy bags, which are often expensive at at least 600 shillings. And those were not the only costly things. My daughter was supposed to go back for the no surgery, the colostomy closure in January. But too bad, we had the insurance was over. I went to an HIF. They wouldn't grant me any major surgery because we had exhausted all. Then I went to where the father used to, where the father works. 
they won't they didn't give me extra gracia for that so i had to wait till july because it's in the government for them to for their year to end and another year to begin Lillian was always anxious about her daughter's health and well-being, especially when admitted in hospital. I used to be like a crazy person, but the first two months and a half made me like this person who can take anything. Because sometimes you used to go on a path of pumuy. she's on oxygen. Lakini the rate at which she's pumuyi, because Ileza, no. My friends used to come, when Guinea, some waited for the burial date, some waited for, ah, huyo, asha kufa kujeni, matanga. They were kind of hopeless. Mpaka, there is a time, ilifika, nikambua, wacha tutu tafte pasta, akuja apatize mtoto. I told them, tunatoka na mtoto hospitali. So, that thing hardened me. So even while taking my daughter for these other surgeries, I had already seen a lot, watoto waki, kufa. But mine was that strong, because there is a point I went to the nursery. Then one of the junior surgeons, Sakauliza, Sam Kubawa, NBU, what do you think we'll do to this? It was the saddest moment, because she told her, kifika pa karusha mikomu. This is the most hopeless case. So you, you, you won't un, And then on seeing I may survive Hapa, we have gone to fourth floor. She has survived the surgeries, when, especially when she was weak. So right now she's strong. The God who was with her in nursery, Nikutu, the God who was with her in nursery, in fourth floor, is the one who will be with her even in these other subjects. He just used to go give my baby. Munda kwa kitanda, nambia mungu. Nani woka na ye. Just wait for the call to go for her. Although there was that fear in me, what if she doesn't wake up? Finally, at two years and four months, Blessing underwent what her mother was hoping would be the last surgery. And it was. Blessing's colostomy was closed. It was a sign of regret. But I had that fear, what if the fistula appears after some time. So I had to give my, myself some money, time before job hunting. So that in case of anything, I will be there for my daughter. One, mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. three, three mm -hmm. four, seven. <laughs> Now, the little girl is her bubbly self, oblivious of the hoops and loops she has had to go through to make it. Dr. Daniel Ojuka is a consultant, a surgeon at the Kenyatta National Hospital. He explains the circumstances under which one can have a stoma, which is an opening for a part of the intestines onto the abdomen to pass a stool. So you can look at it from uh, childhood or from when a baby is born so and until adulthood. So there are a number of situations that may result in a stoma being made. Uh, so initially, if you have a child, uh, some children are born without the anus. The anus is closed, it's not open. Uh, so those are children that will require a stoma. Uh, you, you create a situation where the, uh, there's an opening of the colon uh, so the stool can come out temporarily before you then recreate a new channel for the, for the colon. Uh, there are other children that they are born, yes, and they have delayed passage of that child uh, newborn stool, and then later on they have problem passing stool. Uh, it's called Hirschsprung's disease. So those kind of children, again, you will have to create a stoma as you find what is the level of the problem 
and then recreate the channel up to where the, 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 the anus is. Then in adults, sometimes then you have a situation where, number one, you get a typhoid infection or you get a situation where uh, you have a trauma, you have been stabbed or there is a gun shot. And so those kind of situations, if you find that they, there's a lot of in, um, dart in terms of stool in the abdomen, you may not reconnect and you may need to create a stoma for them. Or if you have a, a patient that has a, a wound in the, around the anus and you want that wound to heal well, so you want to divert stools to allow the wound to heal before you now reconnect uh, again. Or the other thing is if you have situations like cancer, then you want to create a, situa a situation where if, if you move the remove the cancer, you create a stoma for the stool to be diverted. Uh, sometimes, of course, in the small gut, you find a situation where people have typhoid, they have perforated gut, you go, they come late and you can't really connect, so you have to create a way of diverting the stool first, allowing the healing process to take place, then you, you come back and uh, reconnect the, the, the gut. The commonest would be the ileum, so you have what is called ileostomy, and uh, then uh, depending on the level, because of course you can even have a jejunum out, so you have a jejunostomy, but the commonest would be the ileum. Then you have the large gut, uh, the commonest would be from the sigmoid, so you have a colostomy from the sigmoid, uh, and of course the transverse. So there is either large gut or small gut, but the, the other issue is just Technicalities depend on which site you are taking it out. Is it transverse? Is it sigmoid? Is it the descending colon? But all, all, all of those can come out as a stoma. And then uh, the other thing is depending on how you, reconstru uh, you construct it. Because if your intention is that it is uh, for a short time, then sometimes it's called you do a loop where you don't cut the whole uh, colon, uh, you don't transect, you just cut part of it so it's easier to return. So it's called loop and sometimes you get two parts coming out. So you get a double barrel or sometimes you just get one which is called an end stoma. So you, there's a way of reconstructing that, that then, which is also important in terms of taking care of the, of the skin around uh, the, the, the stoma that you have created. There are, of course, I think this, this is part of what should happen earlier before you take the patient to theater, especially if it is a patient that is not emergency. And even in emergency situation, after the surgery, you should talk with the patient and say, this is what we found, this is what we did. So you should tell them uh, the color because because the, the, the gut is usually pink, whether you are a, a white or a black African like me. So the gut is always pink. So you need to explain the, that that pink shishness will always be there. Uh, and if it is inflamed, of course, it will be red, but normally it will be pink. So I think that is something that you, you need to explain. This is what has been done, you show then you show that what will be abnormal. Because here yes, sometimes it can uh, prolapse out, so more of it can come out and you can say, now this one, if it is more than this, then you come back because that is abnormal. So it can prolapse or it can disappear, retract inside. Or sometimes it can even close from outside, become stenosis. So all those things are things that you should explain so that if they see anything abnormal, then they come to for a checkup. A lot more gas than usual. So I think uh, those are the things that, of course, nobody, I mean, if it is the only food, then you will need to say, that's what I ate, and then you need to know how to take care of yourself, yes. Um, the, the rest of the time, I think you just live like 
uh, the rest of us. Uh, you need trauma bags. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, taking care of trauma means that because the effluent, especially if it is a leostomy, it will excoriate the skin. You need to ensure that the effluent goes to the bag. Stomach care is often a delicate. A good grasp of how to goes a long way in minimizing complications. Sally Agalo leaves the colostomy after colon cancer-related surgery. She educates caregivers and patients on this. So we begin, step one is to get the size of the stoma using this measuring guide. Once someone gets the size of the stoma, they use the scissor to cut to cut the bag. So that depends on where the what the stoma is. If it's a colostomy, then this is the bag to use. If it is a ileostomy, this is the bag to use. If it is a urostomy, that's from the bladder, this is the bag to use. So after the after the client has cut the bag, they remove the adhesive from the bag and stick it on their body. To make the to make the bag more comfortable to use, there are other things that well, appliances that are required. There is this seal, especially used for people with ileum or uh, urostomy, just to give the bag reinforcement. We also have wipes that we use to to remove the adhesive from the skin when it sticks. Sometimes someone can get rashes, so they can use the powder. There's also the belt that is hooked to the bag just to give it reinforcement so that it doesn't give way and fall off. There's also the clip that is used to clip the bag at the, at the end so that it doesn't leak. At the end here, there's something I've said I've called irrigation. Irrigation is to clean the colon and then someone goes without poo for at least 24 hours. That is usually done for only people with colostomies because maybe someone would want to swim and uh, they can't go to the swimming pool with that, with the poo in the bag, so they do irrigation and then they're able to stay without poo for 24 hours. This is called a measuring guide that every ostomate, ostomate is the person who has a stoma, so the ostomate should start with this, because whatever is coming out of the body is very, um, is fluid and acidic, so it can burn the skin, so that is very important to, that's why it is important to have a, a measuring guide and measure your size. So what happens when without the bag, the measuring guide is put on the stoma. So depending on what size you find on the measuring guide, you come to the bag, and place it depending on what size that uh, was found. Using a scissor that is carved at the edge, uh, the bag is cut, and then this adhesive is spilled and then it's stuck to the body. So this is a colostomy bag. This is for somebody who has a, a, a colostomy or a ileostomy. The bag is a bit, um, it's, it's a convex bag. There's also this bag that is closed, like this is what I like using. It's not open at the end, so that means that once it is filled up, it is, you just remove it and uh, fix another one. So that means depending on how much the patient eats, you can use maybe more than one bag in a day. This bag is for urostomy. As you can see, the, it's very different from the rest at the, at the bottom. So this urostomy bag has this thing here that is, because whatever is coming into the bag is urine. So this is opened and the urine is released into the toilet and then again it's it's covered. So someone with a urostomy cannot use a bag like this because it's, it will feel very fast and it will also not be very comfortable. So the ileostomy, there's this opening here. So it's stuck on the body like that with the adhesive. So then you fold this, fold it again, fold it again, and then there are these two flaps that 